here I am uh, treating the last patient of the day before I have my own procedure and this is the second portion of the eye LASIK procedure known as the custom view procedure performed by the Visex laser. LASIK has certainly evolved over the years and uh, though it was always relatively safe the procedure has become easier and even more safe over the years. I'd like it to be known that uh, the reason I uh, had the procedure in my 40s was not because I feared uh, for uh, my safety, ocular safety, earlier, but uh, the problem that um, I was experiencing was the inability to see at close range. That is uh, something called presbyopia. I've never actually worn glasses and so I've not been in need of the LASIK procedure. But in my 40s I noticed that I simply couldn't see fine print uh, close up and made the decision to go ahead with uh, LASIK rather than wear reading glasses. Here I am filling in the consent form as per the protocol. Again another privilege that I could enjoy was coming in and comparing notes with John um, agreeing on the numbers that uh, we were going to uh, use to uh, treat my eyes. Obviously this is not something that uh, patients do routinely and it was at his uh, invitation that I came in and uh, had a look. Alright, it was time to go and get my uh, Valium tablet uh, and uh, have the anaesthetic and antiseptic applied to my eyes. So here I am, uh, perhaps uh, uh, obvious to everybody, slightly groggy from the Valium and uh, I'm being given instructions by my own staff to uh, uh, put my hat and galoshes on. The next step is to apply anaesthetic drops to the eyes which sting a little bit but uh, really is not uh, too bad at all. And then the antiseptic. Iodine is still one of the most uh, effective antiseptics uh, known to man and this is betadine, a commercial proper preparation of iodine being applied to my eyes uh, particularly the skin over the lids, the lashes and the surrounding skin of the forehead and cheeks. Then it's time to go into the laser room. Okay. It's a bit of a novelty for the staff to have uh, uh, me as the patient. Anyway I'm told to lie back and to relax I'm being positioned the first step of the procedure consists of creating a uh, LASIK flap and that's done with the intralase laser. The flap used to be created using a little blade, an oscillating blade known as a microkeratome which uh, in its day was very sophisticated but uh, it uh, is obvious to everybody I'm sure that a laser is uh, more precise and safer than anything metallic and sharp going near the eye. Here uh, John is uh, positioning the laser over my eye before creating the flap. The right eye was done first and then he moved on to performing the procedure on my left eye. This prepares the way for the Visex custom view laser to reshape the underlying cornea. And uh, as um, uh, usual I was swung underneath the second laser physics custom view laser for the second part of the procedure. Uh, we went back to the first eye um, to perform the operation on that side before uh, switching over to the left. So there's my eye up on the monitor. The lashes are covered with some plastic. More drops are instilled to ensure that the procedure is pain free. A little speculum, a little wire um, speculum is used just to help with the eyelids, particularly in people with small eyes like my own. John will be using a little instrument just to reflect the flap. I can assure you that uh, there are no needles and no sharp instruments, uh, knives or anything like that used, but just a little blunt cannula to lift the flap up and out of the way. Then the Visex laser applies uh, the treatment to the underlying cornea. There is a red or if you like a reddish orange flashing light that um, the patient is asked to look at and I must say that there were times when I couldn't see that light and uh, I 
I started looking around trying to search for it when John said it's best to look straight ahead then. But I was reassured by the fact that the three-dimensional tracker on the laser uh, applied the treatment perfectly centred on the pupil, the central part of the pupil of my eye, even though my eye was um, wobbling about. Here John is getting so-called iris registration, that is he's taking a picture of the landmarks of my eye on the iris, comparing them to a picture that was taken of my eye earlier. This does a number of things, it ensures that uh, it is indeed the correct eye that he's treating in the correct patient, but also importantly, particularly with uh, some astigmatism, is that any rotation in the eye is compensated for by the laser because it can detect that the landmarks have moved and so it will change the direction of the beam to ensure that it is uh, centred on the correct axis for the treatment of astigmatism. That's the procedure over. Uh, it takes roughly, I suppose, seven or eight minutes per eye for the entire process. Uh, the actual lasering part is close to about 30 or 40 seconds. And here I am being helped up. Uh, I can see, look, it's uh, slightly foggy, but certainly I know that all's gone well, and I can even detect that my um, uh, focus has altered. I'm asked to go into an adjacent room, and uh, my eyes will be examined to ensure that the position of the flaps is satisfactory. This is a slit lamp, uh, familiar to anybody that has been to uh, an eye doctor before. Uh, that uses a light under high magnification to examine the corneas. Sometimes... So, go on, I'm just going to check and make sure that those flaps are in the right spot. That would be grateful. rubbing them, touching them, and uh, I took that on board and uh, thanked him for it. Drops are now instilled, medicated drops, to um, help with the heating process. Again at this stage I can see, um, in fact uh, as uh, the minutes go by, the clarity of my vision uh, is improving. My orthoptist uh, is repeating the instructions that she gives patients normally to me, uh, reminding me that I shouldn't rub my eyes, that it's best to go home and to have a little bit of a sleep, and I said, sure, I'll do that. Then, of course, um, she uh, couldn't help herself but to uh, ask me, well, you know, how did it feel being on the receiving end for a change? And so, philosophically, I say, you know, it's interesting. It is pretty much as I expected it to be, but uh, there were some idiosyncratic, I suppose, uh, effects to be noted, like uh, loss of uh, uh, the sight of uh, the flashing orange light. Here I am gesticulating, telling her that I couldn't always see it flashing. I didn't think the procedure was particularly uncomfortable. Basically, it has confirmed what I think um, we say to patients uh, quite accurately. Uh, that is, uh, some pressure is uh, felt. Uh, it's not um, uh, particularly comfortable, but um, certainly uh, not painful.